When you think of a building, what comes to mind? Sears Tower? The Empire State Building? Rockefeller Center? How about another concept of building, such as 1 Thessalonians 5.11? Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. What about generations? The Manning family? The royal family? In a scriptural context, Psalm 105.8 reminds us of an eternal promise. He remembers His covenant forever, a promise He made for a thousand generations. Finally, faith. It's what reassures when times are tough. It provides comfort when it feels like nothing else will. It can also move mountains. 2 Corinthians 5.7 reminds us to walk by faith and not by sight. Combining all of these elements, and we're building generations of faith. Generations coming together for those of the future. As far as what the church has meant to me, it's a tie with past generations, a tie with a form of permanence. Um, I think I was formally uh, inducted in, as a member of the church when I was about 12 years old in 1945. Um, my growing up years were closely associated with uh, World War II. I was in the uh, third grade when the Pearl Harbor attack happened and in the sixth grade when the, when the war ended. So we, we, we the, my age group, were totally involved in, in the scout troop. We took up uh, scrap uh, paper drives and all kinds of things like that during, the, during our grammar school years. Just coming to church on Sunday morning and walking into this beautiful sanctuary and hearing the message and the music, also the chapel. I had a friend from Mississippi came in and I was showing her the church and she said, anybody that doesn't believe there's a God, bring him to your chapel. They'll leave knowing. Our family was blessed to be able to contribute to the chapel and name it in memory of my late sister who passed away in the early 80s and uh, we're so thankful to have it here. It's a place of solitude, warmth, and passion, compassion when we get there. Uh, it, it's from time to time just a, a, a peaceful seat to take and be thankful to our Lord. So we, uh, when we moved back to Ozark, we were looking for a new home church, um, a little bit closer to us. And uh, we tried a couple of different places and we came here and we just kind of fell in love with all the people here. Um, very open and inviting. They had a great children's program or have a great children's program. Um, and that made a big difference for our daughter so she could feel at home in church as well. I mean, right when we walked through the doors, they always made sure we felt welcome. I mean, not just the first day, for weeks. I mean, they came up to us and welcomed us and was just glad we were here. So that was very nice to have. I love this church. And also how it has grown and the buildings and everything. It's just absolutely breathtaking to walk into this chapel. I mean, it's a sanctuary and see all the beautiful windows and uh, the people. This is a family church. I'm Marilyn Tamplin, and I'm sitting here in the sanctuary of First United Methodist Church. In 1980 by 1985, we all realized that our church was in deep distress. It's a good word to put, way to put it. Uh, the ceiling tiles, the white ceiling tiles were loose. Everything was faded. And in 1980, when these beautiful cushions were dedicated, it made everything else look drab. This church was built in 1936, and basically it had not been renovated since that time. So in 1984, in this fall, the administrative board and the trustees decided it was time to do something. First and foremost, I have to mention James Lisney. He was the architect at his firm that did the renovation for everything. And most importantly, it was finding more room for people to sit on Sundays. And the balcony that I'm facing right now was not here. But they did find the plans that Mr. H.L. Holman 
drew up in 1936 to 1938 did have the steel beams in the back two big columns to support a balcony. When that was discovered, then the plans could go forward and we came up with this new beautiful sanctuary. I think our church has a huge potential still, uh, the same potential probably that we felt and realized when I chaired the first Family Life Center uh, construction project. One of the things that I I'm think I'm proud of and I think y'all are extremely proud of because it involved our fathers were tremendous leaders in this oh, yeah. church and uh, they did a lot to, to bring to bring us up to where we are today especially with the building of the Sunday school facility yeah. and then the adding on of the our, uh, our remodeling of our church sanctuary uh, they were the key leaders in getting all that done and here we are you know, so many years later, and kind of stepped in their footsteps, and and, uh, and so we're kind of filling in those same roles at this point in time. And uh, some of my favorite memories uh, are working with the youth groups as they grew up, and with our children in them. Uh, we helped achieve a bunch of ski trips with them, and and united the youth, and they're very were very strong, and still are in our church now. So, Miss Marie, what, is, uh, what does this class mean to, to you and your family? On Sunday mornings, I usually put my purse out on the couch and my Brandon, who does not speak, but he knows if he pulls my purse out on there that I'll be one to be sure to bring him to his class. So we do that and uh, he just pulls on me. He's the first out of the car and races to the church. He loves to come, even though he can't speak to tell us, but there are ways that he shows <laughs> that he loves to come. So I appreciate this classroom. Well, that's the way we feel. Uh, Ryan, he loves church. Uh, when you, I get him up in the morning, he, he's either wanting to go to church or go to school, and uh, he sees uh, people's picture in the paper uh, that comes to church and when he sees them he points them out to Happen. us at church but uh, we can't wait to uh, we see this room uh, get furnished uh, and to fit their needs this Sunday school class gives us as all as families and adults opportunities to go into the class of our own we're also given an opportunity to attend church together. Oh. And we are so blessed because we have five teaching teams that share uh, the individuals and share the opportunities Man. to tell them about Jesus. And Man. at this point, we don't know what goes <laughs> in, but someday oh. we will know. Oh. My Sunday school teacher when I was first starting school, uh, but she's still an active member of the church today. Uh, and all of us know her, it's Miss Sarah Carroll. Uh, but Miss Sarah also had that infectious type personality that kids just uh, loved and gravitated to. Uh, and that was, if you can imagine Miss Sarah now, you know how sweet and nice and kind she is. Think of her when she was in her, I guess, mid to late 30s, some 55 years or so ago. I shouldn't have said that, should I? That's uh, not supposed to give away a woman's age, I guess. But. Uh, but Miss Sarah, uh, to this day, is still uh, a real example to me of a life well lived. And uh, Miss Sarah, if you're listening, I want you to know that if you want to get the class back together, uh, me and Kevin Schumann and Kay Klaus Nicholas are, are here for you. So uh, we'll we'll get the crowd back together, and we're we're sorry for all the times we misbehaved. Well, there's no doubt my earliest memories was staying in the nursery during the church service. And uh, my earliest memory would be the day that Woody Hillboat and I were arguing in the nursery about who was the fastest. And Woody said he could outrun me, and I said there wasn't any way in the world. And he said, well, when the nursery worker uh, turns her back, let's run out the door. <laughs> He says, and we'll race down to Miss Bird's house, which used to be behind the church. And so, sure enough, she turned her back, and we ran out the door. And we raced, and I won. And then Woody jumped on top of me and broke my collarbone. So <laughs> that is my earliest remembrance. But there were certainly many years of growing up with so many people that, uh, that I thought were 
valuable in my upbringing. I just remember a lot about Sunday school teachers. I guess one of the most satisfying things about being a member of this church um, throughout my life has been uh, the ability to watch my son grow up uh, and have the opportunity to do not only the same things that I did, such as going to Sunday school and youth group and being part of scouting, but also uh, having the opportunity to have this uh, family life center to uh, um, grow up in and be a part of upward basketball and, and things of that nature. But um, I know that both my parents were uh, long-term members here and um, had the benefit of having so many friends and uh, fellow Christians to be, uh, to uh, communicate with and uh, have in their lives and I certainly enjoyed that. My older sister uh, grew up in this church and actually became a Methodist minister and married a Methodist minister. Uh, but it's been a real treat for me seeing my son grow up in the church and uh, have the opportunity to benefit from so many of these same programs as well as so many others that the church, uh, church now has. One of my earliest memories was Reverend Bob Collins and his Sunday night sermons and he'd have what was called a chalk, chalk talk. Chalk talk, absolutely. And uh, so I was just mesmerized by the fact that he could stand up there, give a sermon, and also be over there drawing a scene from the sermon or a face from the sermon or, or something like that. And I was just, I was mesmerized by his talent and uh, he was just a great guy. Wouldn't he give those to people after, after that? Yeah. That's right. I, I That's bet right. there's some of those around somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. some are in the vestibule still sitting in there in one of the uh, framed pictures that are in there. I mm, think that's really. one of his the pictures that he did as well. So, yeah. Do you remember the the Sunday night? You know, and of course all of us went to MYF and to church Sunday right. night. Was, of course that was non-negotiable. I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. What you did, and we look forward to it. Mm -hmm. But the night that uh, there was a group that got loud, I'll never forget it, of youth, and he called them out in church. <laughs> he stopped during a chalk talk. Is he was, I can vividly see it, it was on the left side, the far left down at the bottom, and um, he stopped and he said, um, uh, you, you sitting on the second and third rows, you need to stop talking. We're in church, and when we dismiss, then you can resume your talking, but he did, he called them out, and of course, Ozark being a small town, you know, he got home. And <laughs> Mom and Daddy wanted to know all about the, what happened, you know, this type of thing. Some other parents had called or whatever, but I do remember that. But you know, <laughs> he, he also uh, went on Boy Scout trips with us, at did. least one yeah, to Miami sure right. down there when Jimmy Dunn was the Scout Master and okay. uh, Reverend Collins was like the other adult, I guess, that went along. I do remember the night that, that somebody tripped carrying the money back down to the <laughs> to the uh, to the altar, and back that we had hardwood floors, oh, and yeah. you could hear quarters and dimes rolling for about five minutes during Mostly that time. Mostly dimes and nickels. That's right. <laughs> and so, but uh, gr you know, just really good times yeah. in the church. And I told somebody the other day, I, as I was walking through, I just had this feeling here in the church. I said, you know, this is home. This is the, yeah, you know, this is. is our church home. Uh, there was never any doubt in my mind that it, that it, that it wasn't then, and or it, was, it was then, and it is still today, uh, 60 some odd, almost 70 years later. You know, I look, look back to considering their ages when they were so involved in the church that they were such young men. Yeah, they really were. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Now, at our age, we're much older. Yeah. They were in they their were. 40s, yeah. 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 That, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and I just, uh, you know, mom and daddy, and, and especially daddy, I mean, he just, as, as y'all's dad, I mean, he just loved the church. It was, yeah. he was just, and and taught us that uh, uh, this is, this is like Frank saying, it's home. And, yeah. you know, uh, but just so many, so many memories from here. Those people made what we had then succeed, and we can now make what we're striving for in the new additions for the children, uh, the facilities in general, to, to grow again. I think we're gonna have a revival, and it's just gonna grow and grow, and especially with this uh, CLC coming in and bringing in more children, and that's gonna bring in more families. And I see this church just growing. 
with all the love we have here and the support from our family members, it's wonderful. I just love walking by the CLC rooms and seeing all the young children and saying, you know, I'm 80 years old and this is our future generation. And if we don't have somebody to teach these children about the love of God and the love of each other, what is it going to be like? And I think it, it will continue to grow. Well, it's a great opportunity for us to build on, uh, build on the past. I, this may sound a little goofy, but I remember a basketball coach from LSU saying one time, and I don't know whether this was an original quote or something that he was quoting, but he says, you're not going to get where you want to go if you forget where you've been. And uh, I think this is an exciting opportunity for us to build on, uh, build on our history, build on our heritage, and have an opportunity to uh, be a part of a, uh, a new opportunity here in our church to build on uh, this family life, uh, not the Family Life Center, but this Child Development Center, uh, which will actually free up space within the church here for Sunday school and other things. But it's an exciting opportunity, I think, for us to, uh, to build on the rich heritage we have of members of this church who have uh, sacrificed and done things for the church, uh, not because they personally benefited from it, but because they knew there would be generations that would follow after them uh, that would have an opportunity to benefit from, from the buildings and things that they helped to, uh, help to create. This new building will provide additional space for our church to expand Sunday school classrooms, office space, and privacy for counseling. For more information about aspects of the campaign, please visit our church website, www.firstozarkumc.org.